there is nothing we cannot accomplish. I first started becoming interested in politics when I was probably 14 or 15 years old. Um, growing up with the Iraq War and the George Bush presidency, um, I just felt really um, unhappy about how the country was heading and the kind of decisions that we were making. And that's why I'm running for office. Uh, Vermont's home. I mean, I practically have maple syrup running through my veins. I wasn't very politically uh, active at all. I turned 18 in the 2000 election, but after the, uh, the financial crash in 2008 uh, is when I know I just started to, to really um, try to understand what's going on in our political system. But I didn't really start to get involved until uh, 2012. So I started paying attention and then it was in 2011, I went to Occupy Wall Street in Manhattan and that kept me engaged. And then I kind of gave up a little bit until 2015 when Bernie announced that he was running. Big welcome to Senator Bernie Sanders. And I absolutely felt compelled to participate um, with his campaign and in politics in general on local scale. It means giving thought to running for office, whether it's school board or city council. Get involved in the process. When we stand together, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. I felt immediately welcomed when I started participating, and I think that that's what kept me interested, made me feel like I could run for office, going to the Hartford Town Dems meetings, going to rallies um, in the primaries for Lieutenant Governor and Governor David Zuckerman, helped me to believe that I could, I could do this, even though I was a nobody, young, single mom, that um, at least in the state of Vermont, politics is accessible and um, that I, I, could, I was welcome. I would absolutely love to be chair of Upper Valley Young Liberals. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the ways that we can go about succeeding, but I'm here to listen to you guys and work together. And um, yeah, I would, I would really appreciate your vote for chair. The really cool thing about being a young person here in Vermont, and especially in the Republican Party, is there's huge opportunities because uh, there's a, a pretty thin bench. And really just being willing to show up and to participate and put a little bit of work in to ensure that there continue to be opportunities uh, for, for young people like me. I actually got selected as uh, one of the 14 members uh, from Vermont to go to the 2012 Republican National Convention. So in a span of a couple months, I went from being not politically involved at all to representing my state on the national level uh, for all Republicans. And during that process of becoming a national delegate, uh, I caught the attention of House Republican leader Don Turner. And so he asked me, well, hey, are you interested in running for the House? And I didn't know anything about the Vermont legislature, how it worked. And I'm running to prove that what we need are more regular, hardworking people who know what folks are going through. I said, well, gosh, if here's the the House Republican leader thinks I, I should run, then maybe I'll give it a shot. And so, uh, so I ran in 2012, uh, not knowing anything, and I can still remember the uh, being terrified the first door that I knocked on. In 2012, I, I lost that election by something like 300 votes, but I stayed involved and uh, I came back in 2014 and I unseated a Democratic uh, incumbent. In 2016, instead of challenging uh, two incumbents, I was the only incumbent in the race. I ran for Vermont House of Representatives in the primary. I lost by 40 votes in my race for state rep, but that was encouraging to me. It was one of the best learning experiences that I've ever had. I got to connect with so many more people in our community and learn how to run a campaign and what it really takes. I saw a lot of libertarians on the ballot, a lot of progressives, some independents on the ballot, and Liberty Union candidates, and I actually think that's a beautiful thing. What's the score? It gives space to candidates to have different positions on different issues rather than, you know, here's the blue position, here's the red position, and you gotta either be 100% on one or 100% on the other. It's very black and white thinking, and that's not, that's not how we can really solve issues. 
So I like that we have a diversity of parties. I would say Vermonters cherish splitting their tickets. I feel like there's a sense in which it's un vermont -y to vote straight party line. I'm not even sure if I have ever voted as a straight Republican ticket. As a millennial, I think a lot of millennials are really getting beyond that, that two-party uh, idea where it's, if this side says yes, then this side has to say no. And it, and it really interferes with, I think, what's, what's good government. So having, uh, having three parties, I think having four or five, uh, you know, uh, helps break down some of those walls. My generation growing up in an era where there's been so much choice and opportunity, and then on the political level, the thing that matters the most, you know, the office of the presidency, it's kind of a binary choice. The tone of the convention was really, I think, unsatisfactory to a lot of on the delegates. So we haven't had a voice here. That's the problem. No voice, no unity. We're, we're acting like everything is okay, and it's not. My takeaway from the DNC experience is that the Democratic Party has some serious work to do to actually be connected with the middle and lower class people of this country. I have a copy of the DNC rules. All this is right here is a piece of trash that we're taking out and we're getting rid of the Democratic Party and the DNC. I have fallen into this place with the national election that I can't even process thoughts about it. I'm very disturbed uh, by, our, by our options. When I went back to the uh, convention in 2016, it was just an awesome opportunity to be around other people in the country who are you know, concerned about a lot of the same things that, that I am. And after the way things unfolded and some of the you know, somewhat heavy-handed tactics, uh, they're, they're much more reluctant uh, to be voting for Trump than they thought that they might be coming into the convention. You know, it's been a depressing topic for a lot of people, but at the same time, I think Vermonters really separate the fact that down-ticket Republicans, Vermont Republicans, are, are nothing like, like Trump. I think that making a difference starts at home, and when you become involved in your community and when you start stepping up and volunteering, that's slowly how we change the world. Those are the building blocks of, of creating change. I have a lot of ideas about what we could do to increase membership and retain membership. In and the political structure that we have, if you want to see change, you're the one who's got to do it. And so I think that's why, you know, Vermonters have oversized dreams because we know that there's so many things that we can do and that we do for ourselves and that we can make an impact. Production funding for Beyond Bernie was provided in part by Three Hats Bookkeeping. Do you want to spend less time bookkeeping? Meet Three Hats Bookkeeping. We pair you with a dedicated bookkeeping team. Each month, your team categorizes your transactions into accurate financial statements. Bookkeeping done for you.